intended it. And we're going to hear Jesus say later on, Sabbath was made for man, not man made for the Sabbath. Do we get that? We don't serve the Sabbath. Plus, we're going to hear Jesus say, is it good to do evil on Sunday, Sabbath? Or is it better to do good? Because by doing nothing, what would Jesus have been doing? I don't remember who it was that said this, but they said, all it takes for evil to succeed in this world is for good men to do nothing. Jesus was not going to sit by and do nothing while this lady was in the bed sick. Just because everybody else wanted to wait till sundown, that has nothing to do with Jesus. So the whole city was gathered around the door and he cured many who were sick with various diseases and he cast out many demons, but he would not let them speak because they knew who he was. What's wrong in the world today that we have friends that don't know who Jesus is? Ooh, are you rolling your toes back under the pew? What's wrong with us that we have friends that can't recognize Jesus? In the morning, while it was still very dark, Jesus got up and went out to a deserted place, and there He prayed. Jesus took time to be holy alone with God, completely set apart from everybody else. Yeah, I've been reading a lot by John Wesley. Ever since about 2012, I've been reading a lot about John Wesley. One, one of the top quotes that I really like from John Wesley is this. I am so busy today that I have to start my day with a couple of hours of prayer so I can be sure that I get everything done. How does that sound? John Wesley was known for getting up two hours before sunrise and starting his prayer time so he could spend time alone with God and studying God's Word. And for a guy that knew five languages, he had a lot of studying to do. I do good to study in English. Simon and his companions hunted for him. And when they found him, they said to him, everyone's searching for you. Now listen to Jesus' response. This is a part of the Bible that your preacher really needs to study. Okay? Listen to Jesus' words. Let's go on to the neighboring towns so that I may proclaim the message there also. For that is what I came out to do. Jesus didn't stomp His foot and say, Leave me alone, I'm trying to be holy. Madra will come walking down the hall. And she, I, when she rounds the door of the office and she says, Hey! <gasps> so what she started doing is she'll knock on the hallway. Come, and I'm in the office. Leave me alone, I'm trying to be holy. Let me alone, I'm studying Greek. I need to learn to be more like Jesus. This is why I'm here. I'm not here to study all the Greek ins and outs of this English book that I open up here every Sunday. I'm here to serve you. Just like Jesus came to serve those people. Jesus was much more polite about it than I am. There's another little phrase right here that we need to look at. Jesus came out. 
Jesus came out, and we got people coming out all the time, don't we? Hey, I'm coming out of the closet, I'm this. I'm coming out of the closet, I'm that. I'm coming out of the closet, here I am at this. We need to be coming out of the closet, and we need to be coming out of the closet as Christians. We need to be telling people about Jesus. We need to be showing people the difference in our lives that Jesus made like this lady, hey, my fever broke because Jesus got a hold of me. And then Jesus went out throughout Galilee proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. Again, Jesus was doing one of John Wesley's quotes. Jesus was doing all the good He could to all the people he could, at all the times that he could, in all the places that he could, because he never knew, we never knew, if he would pass that way again. And that's one of John Wesley's rules. Do all the good you can to all the people you can, in all the places that you can, because you never know when you're going to pass that way again. Amen? Now, I'd like to invite you all into the great Thanksgiving for Epiphany. <sighs> Christ our Lord invites to His table all who love Him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved You with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law, and we have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners, and that proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, Creator of heaven and earth. Before the mountains were brought forth or you had formed the earth, from everlasting to everlasting, you alone are God. You created light out of darkness and brought forth life on the earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, in whom you have revealed yourself, our light and our salvation. In his baptism and in table fellowship, he took his place with sinners your Spirit anointed Him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. By the baptism of His suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which He gave Himself up for us, He took the bread and He gave thanks to you, saying, 
Thank you, Father, for bringing forth wheat in the field so we can have bread on the table. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you saying, Thank you, Father, for bringing forth grapes on the vine so we can have wine on the table. He gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body of Christ, the body and the blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by His blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at His heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now with the boldness of the children of God, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, you know my speech. These are not Methodist tables. This is not, this is not a church thing. This is a thing... This is a sacrament. This is a holy sacrament between you and God. And there's no church and there's no person that can stand between you and the grace of God. So as you feel led, please come and partake of the sacrament.
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this gift that we call communion, where you have given yourself to us. Uh, we, we understand it, but we cannot comprehend it. We just continue to pray that you will continue to give yourself to us, that we can continue to live the life that you would have us live. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, friends, would you stand for our closing prayer? Grant, O oh God, that what has been said here with our lips we may believe in our hearts, and what we believe in our hearts we may practice in our lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.